glorified in them. Now I'm no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you have given me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy and fulfilled and my joy fulfilled in themselves. Verse 14. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one, keep them in the world, but they should not be of the world. This is what Jesus is saying. Let me read that verse again, verse 15. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world and for their sakes I sanctify myself that they may also be sanctified by the truth sanctify them by your truth your word is truth your word Jesus is the truth your word is truth now as you can see here Jesus is praying that the world would maintain our victory that we would rather maintain your victory our victory and our joy in the midst of all that the world tries to throw at us that's why verse 9 to 11 says I pray for them I do not pray for the world but for those whom you have given me for they are yours and all mine are yours and yours are mine this is what jesus is saying whatever belongs to god belongs to them why because they belong to you we belong to god i want to um talk about how we can maintain victory how we can be overcomers in the world that is filled with all the confusion that we see in the passages that we have read i want to talk about how we as Christians can maintain our hope and certainty in the world where our, where our sense of certainty in what the world has to offer is decaying rapidly. You see, the world we live in is so frustrating for people now to live normal lives because confusion is coming from all angles of life. Nothing is left. Everything is being, being challenged. We see a lot of people are coming up with bizarre ideas concerning their identity. We see a lot of things creeping into our society today, and we don't know where it is going to end. Who is going to put a stop to this? The world seems to go wayward, and there is no stopping. Evil is flourishing. Evil is the order of the day, and we have to understand one thing 
that though the world is so frustrating today and all these confusions are going on, we need to hold on to the truth. Jesus says your word is truth. So in this passage, as I said earlier on, I want us to talk about how we as Christians can maintain our hope and certainty in a world where our sense of certainty in what the world has to offer is decaying rapidly. In the past 20, 25 years, we've seen a lot of changes coming on. All along, we have believed that uh, God created man and woman. Now the argument today is, no, there is not only man and woman. We are now expanded <laughs> of what it means to be a human being. It says the, the, the God created two genders. The argument today is that there are so many genders and that people are identifying themselves according to what they think they are, not according to how God made them. Yes, it is confusing today. We don't know where it's going to end. Our children are being taught in school all these things. They are being told that they can be who they want to be, not in terms of academic, not in terms of learning, but in terms of who they are. There is this new definition of identifying who you are. And people have come up with so many things that they think that they, 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 they are uh, the, those things. But you see, God cannot be mocked. Whatever man sows, the scripture teaches us that he will also reap. Today's world is fast becoming a very frustrating place to live and maintain any sense of security and comfort. But in Jesus, we have hope, a hope that does not fade away. It's a hope that remains intact. It's a hope that we must all be seeking after. So my goal as it were, in this message, is twofold, if I have to say that. These are the two things I want to emphasize on. First of all, even though, as I've said, that the, uh, everything is becoming frustrating, we need to understand first to give us hope. That's the main purpose of what Jesus had prayed in John 17. That whole chapter is about prayer. Jesus is praying for his followers. He's about to leave the earth to return back to the Father and he's praying for believers. That's what the scriptures are talking about, the passage that we read. And it's from those scriptures that we read that we can pick out all the important things that Jesus mentions. So my aim is to give us hope and certainty in a world that is full of confusion. And secondly, to create in us an empathy and understanding of the generation so that we can effectively offer them the hope that they need in this crazy world. There's got to be hope. There's got to be certainty over it. What we are saying here, or what Jesus is saying, even though there is this confusion in the world, this one thing stands out that we can be, we can, we ha we can have hope and certainty in a certain world where everything is so much on the spiral. The bricks have come off. Everything that man comes up with, he wants to 
enforce that. He wants to say, this is what I believe. And because I believe it, this is the way I'm going to live. My friends, if we are going to live in this world that is full of uncertainty, we must run back to the scriptures and discover that God in his word gives us hope and certainty in an uncertain world. This generation expresses the uncertainty of the world in which we all live in today. As Christians, this is the question I want to pose. As a Christian, do you have hope? Or let me put it that way. If you are not a Christian, do you have hope? This is the very essence of this message. I want to bring that hope to you and sit in it so that as you see the confusion around you and around the world, you can still be so uh, you can still be, you can still uh, have that sense of hope and certainty because you believe in God. In John 16, verse number 33, this is what we find there. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. This is Jesus preparing us. He said these many, many, many years ago, and it still affects us. He said it to the disciples then, but the truth of the scriptures on the way that Jesus said is still so valid and powerful today. For the word of God does not change. Yes, Jesus here prays that these things I've spoken to you, speaking to the disciples and to us. This thing that I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Peace will only be had in Jesus. That's what Jesus is emphasizing. In the world, he says, you will have frustrations. You will have all these confusions coming up to confuse you and frustrations to confuse you. As I mentioned earlier, because of the of the of the, 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 the confusion that is out there. I feel for the young generation. I feel for my grandchildren. I have eight. And I feel for them because of the things that they are being taught in school are very much ungodly. School is supposed to teach them geography, maths, and all these other things. Not how to identify themselves in this and that or teach them how to do certain things they are spoiling the minds of our children i wonder if there's going to be any morality at the end of the day at the pace things are going that's why we as christians following the word of god we can stand up and say thus saith the word of god we need to proclaim we need preachers who are going to be so courageous in standing up for the truth preachers who are not afraid to speak if others have the liberty if others can speak freely if others can proclaim whatever they are proclaiming we as christians have the same right to do the same to proclaim what we believe in and this is what we do here at the kerygma we proclaim the good news the good news is this that jesus christ came and died on the cross for sinners so that those who will believe in him will not perish and they will be covered in this prayer that Jesus prayed when he said these things have I spoken to you that in me you may have peace in the world you will have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world 
Yes, Jesus is not saying ignore the, the, these things that they are not happening. Bury your head in the sun. Jesus is saying, yes, these things are happening and you're going to have tribulation. You are going to have trials. But he says, be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. Without Christ, we are subject to the elements of the world. Galatians chapter 4, verses five, 3 to 5 says, Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth His Son, of a woman born under the law to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. You see, we are sons of God by adoption. That's what the scripture is teaching us here. Sons by adoption. Ephesians chapter 2 verse number 12 says this. That at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. This is who we were before we became Christians. We were aliens. We were without Christ and because we were without Christ we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. The covenants did not cover us up because we were outside all those to whom the covenant of God will cover. And this could only be whether they were Israelites given to them but also who have come who have become Christians by accepting Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, they can now be covered. Because Christ has adopted us into His family, through the new birth, we are no longer subject to the elements of the world. Of all the characteristics of this generation are elements of the world that we as Christians do not have to be subject to or to conform to. We are no longer outside the common worth of Israel or the covenants of God. We have been incorporated. We have been brought in to enjoy the covenants of God that he has made with his people. And because of that, our status have been changed. The world doesn't have to affect us. The world doesn't have to change us. But we need to change the world. Not by force, but by proclamation. You cannot change anyone's life by force. Yes, you can force them to do certain things. And they, they may even do those things. But inwardly, they are not changed. So our message is proclamation. And because what we proclaim is truth, the Bible said as we read it, that the word of God is truth. Okay, the word of God is truth. Jesus is truth. That's what he says. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Jesus is the truth. The world is looking for the truth and they will never find it. As long as they ignore, pardon, as long as they ignore Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the word, the life. We are part of the kingdom of God that cannot be moved. Even though the world is experiencing a shaking, a frustration, a change, it's, it's, it's evolving, it's changing. You see, Everything will change, but the Word of God, the Bible says, will never change. So we must stick to the Scriptures that do not change. 
Why? Because they are forever settled in heaven. Yes, you can have hope in this world that has no hope. The world that is full of uncertainty, you can be certain and you can sing a song and say, because she leaves, I confess tomorrow. Somebody shout Amen wherever you are. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 27 to 28, we read the following. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things which are being shaken as of things that are made that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may save God acceptably with reverence, with reverence and godly fear. Here scripture is saying there are some things that can be shaken. There are some things that cannot be that can be changed but that the kingdom that we belong to cannot be shaken or cannot be changed yes the world is changing it is only the world and the things of the world that are changing but we belong to a kingdom that cannot be shaken we belong to a kingdom that cannot be changed it goes on why? Because uh, um, uh, the Bible says these things are not worldly but godly. And we must accept them with reverence and godly fear. Even though many of these things that were mentioned may have influenced our lives in one degree or another, whether we are born into the kingdom of God, God wants to erase those effects from our lives and give us hope to live abundantly and as overcomers in his kingdom as sons and daughters. In this world, you will have frustrations you will have tribulations but be of good cheer i jesus is saying i have overcome the world let me give you five kingdom principles let me give you kingdom principles for living in certainty remember we're saying that we we're looking at the message the message is twofold we can look at we, that we are looking at um having hope and certainty in an uncertain world. What is the first thing that we must realize if we are going to be overcomers? Because that's what Jesus prayed for, that we become overcomers in the world. That is so confusing. That is so frustrating. The world that seems to have lost its direction is going everywhere because there is no stopping for it. And these are the principles that I want to share with you. Number one, if you are going to be an overcomer, if you're going to have hope in this world that is filled with confusion, first, you must hold fast to your faith or the confession of hope. You must realize that Jesus came to give us hope. I'm talking to you. If you are a child of God, I want you to realize that's what Jesus came to do, to give you hope. If you are not a Christian yet, I want also I want you also to know that Jesus came to give you hope. Look at the way you are living your life. You are some of you are fully convinced that you have there is no hope. With all these things going on around us and around the world, we see that there is no hope. But I'm here to tell you this good news that you can have hope because Jesus came to do that. So hold fast to your confession of hope. Through the word of God, 
We are given many promises of God's provision for our lives. Read the scriptures. We must content our lives around God's word, which says to us, not what the conditions of the world are saying. In other words, we must obey the scriptures and what they are saying instead of obeying what the world is teaching us. I'm not talking about rebelling against the government or rebelling against those who are in authority. I'm talking about doing what is right and what is right can only be found in the scriptures because God has given his mind, his will and what he wants us to do. It's all written in the word of God. That's where we are on. So here we are saying the word of God is the truth that we must align our confession and faith with. You see, if you believe the word of God, the scriptures, you are going to have a different mind from that of the world because the world believes that there are so many genders. The scriptures will say there are only two, man and woman two genders. But the world is saying, no, there's more than 20 of those. The world is telling you to live however you want to live. But the scripture, scriptures teach us from the beginning what God's intent was. God's intention wasn't changed, hasn't changed. It's, it remains the same. People are accepting different kind of lifestyles that are contrary to the scriptures. My friends, we must live according to the scriptures because all scripture has been given by the inspiration of God. And scripture here we are referring to, we are referring to the word of God. And the word of God we are referring to, I'm not referring to any book, but I'm referring to to the Bible that this is the document that God gives to us, the document that gives us guidance how to live our life, how to treat our families, how to live well with one another, how to live in peace, how we can obtain peace, how we can obtain forgiveness and salvation, how we can be healed. It's all in the scriptures. The scriptures introduces us to God. The scripture tells us where we came from. The scriptures teach us the, that we have a reason to be here, a purpose, not our purpose, but God who purposed us to live here on earth. We're not here by accident. It's not by chance. God had a reason. God had a purpose. And that will be accomplished whether we want, we like it or not. God's, God's will will prevail. In Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3 to 4, we read the following. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. The law, the Bible says, uh, or be partakers rather of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through Christ, uh, through lust. The corruption uh, that is in the world is through lust. Through lust. We know lust is, is the desires of, of the flesh. The flesh dictates to us so many things. And if we are not Christians or protected by the power of the Holy Ghost, we'll just end up doing those things. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he 
who promised is faithful. We're dealing with the first point of the principles that will help us to live in this uncertain world. That is to hold fast to our confession of hope. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who has promised is what is faithful. James chapter 2 and verse number 5. Listen, my beloved, my beloved brethren. God Has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in the faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? This is what God has done. James is saying, he says, listen, beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of these things to be rich in faith? You see, it's not, it's those who are not poor in terms of material wealth. This is not the poverty that Paul, uh, that, uh, the, uh, that uh, James is talking about here, but this is in conjunction or in connection with the other uh, uh, scriptures that talk about this. It says, listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? Remember, blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of God. So it's not poverty of wealth. It's po spiritual poverty which affects everybody. Yes, someone can have material wealth and have it in abundant. Yet be poor in spirit. Because material blessings will not satisfy the spiritual need of a human being. Only God has the power to do that. First John chapter 5, verse number 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Remember, we have to hold fast the confession of hope. Secondly, don't let possessions become your center of focus. We're dealing with how you can, how you can live in the world with hope and be certain in the world that is full of uncertainty. So the second point here is, don't let possessions become your center of focus. We must not allow ourselves to get sucked into measuring our success and possessions according to worldly standards. God's standards are altogether different. In the world, possessions are the center of most people's focus. We cannot afford to be conformed to the world in the area, in this area rather, otherwise our focus gets turned to what we don't have rather than what God wants to pour into our lives through his promises. That's what happens when we are so thirsty for spirit, for material blessings. Our focus is staying away from what God has given us to wanting things that are not even there. Our focus will be turned to what we don't have. Our main concentration will be on what we don't have we will be praying for, for those things that we have them. But hey, how about praising God for what you already have? You have life, you have the family, you have other blessings that the world cannot offer you. Only, can, only God can do that. So our focus must not be on possessions. Let's not become possession focused people my friends first timothy 
says this, First Timothy chapter 6, verse 7, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry out nothing. My friends, we may have all the wealth. I'm not against you having wealth. If God blesses you, thank God, and we should all thank God for you. But if that becomes your main focus, and I see this, this is the standard of the world. They want to have all this and that. You, you build a 20, <laughs> a 20 bedroom house and you only sleep in one. What's the, what, what, what's the logic in that? You only sleep in one. Okay. You only sleep in one. In one room at a time. Are you content with what you have? Are you content that you have God on your side? Are you content that you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you content that the Holy Spirit is working in your life? In and through you. My friend, if you're content in all these things, if you're content in God, God will satisfy the longings of your heart. Hebrews 11 verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Here, the, the 11th chapter of Hebrews, they call it the, the chapter of heroes. The chapter of heroes because of the people who exercise faith, who put their faith in God, what they accomplished. But here in this verse we have read, it says they believed some of them did not even see the things that they believed. They died without realizing those things. Was it their loss or no? They trusted God, that God will do it. The fact that they didn't see it don't mean God did not promise it don't mean that God would have not given them, but because God's desire for them was for them to believe in God, not in the things that they were promised. There's a big difference. There's a big difference there. So Hebrews 13, Hebrews 11, 13 says, These all died in faith. They died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. It didn't matter. They knew they did not belong here. If God fulfilled those Praise God. If God did not fulfill those things, they still praised God. They still believed God. And as a result, they died. But having seen them afar off, were assured of them. They knew God would perform. Remember, already we have said that he who has promised is faithful. So, don't let possessions become the center of your focus. The center of focus. The focus must be on God. Thirdly, live for God's will and purpose. If you are going to have hope in this world, confused as it is, full of uncertainty, you need to live for God's will and purpose. James 4 13 to 15 reads as follows come now you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city spend a year there buy and sell and make a profit whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow for what is your life it is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, 
we shall live and do this or that. First John 2, 17. And in the world, and the world is passing away, and the last of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. My friend, live for God's will and purpose. Know what God's will is for your life. And do that and follow that. Why? The world is passing away. And the last of it. And he who does the will of God abides forever. Yes, live for God's will and purpose. Fourthly, remain loyal and faithful to God no matter what. Okay, some of us want to obey God when things are going good or well in our lives. That's when we obey God. That's when we praise God. That's when we go to church. That's when we do all this and, and that. Second Peter 1 verse 10 and 11 says this, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance, of, uh, uh, an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent. Diligent to do what? To make your call and election sure. You see, what God has called us to is so wonderful. Let it show. Let it show that God has changed your life and your life is focused on being loyal to God no matter what. Whether things are going well, be loyal to God. When things are not going well in your life, with uh, if you're facing challenges, whatever challenges those will be, be loyal to God. For if you do these things, Scripture said, you will never stumble. <laughs> you will never stumble. I know some of you have been praying for so many things and they have not happened okay and you have begun to doubt because the enemy takes wait for that opportunity or that chance or that door to open when you doubt God even a little and then he will step in and bring in more doubt even stronger he'll begin to point out things in your life why hasn't this happened why is it going uh, why are you going through this and that be loyal to god no matter what i may be not well but i should never think god has deserted me that god has forsaken me god does not forsake those who love him he promised to be with them even to the end right even to the end, God will be with you. So remain loyal and faithful to God no matter what. I don't know what tribulation or what condition or what your situation is and how desperate that uh, uh, situation is. But this one thing I know, remain loyal to God. Okay, remain loyal to God. What does the scripture say? Second Peter 1. 10 to 11 said, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. What you profess to have found in Jesus, let it show. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly, uh, to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior. Revelation chapter 3, verse number 10. We read the following. Because you have kept my command to preserve, to, to, persever, to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of that trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell 
on the earth. There's a promise for you. There's a promise for you because you have kept my command to persevere. I will also keep you from the hour of trial. God will keep you from the hour of trial. He will be there in the midst of your trials. He will be there. He never left Daniel. He never left Joseph. He never left Jesus. Even though some of you will say, well, he prayed, well, why have you forsaken me? But remember, he was loyal and faithful to the Father who sent him no matter what. That's why he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will. Whatever situation, remain faithful. The last one is, keep your focus on eternity, not on temporal things. Keep your focus on eternity. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3 to 5 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time my friends my friend keep focus on eternity all these things we see are temporal time is limited but eternity has no end. Eternity goes on and on and on and on and on. So blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope. Remember, we said you can have hope. That's the aim of this message, to bring hope to you. That even though things are the way they are, you can still have hope. Why? Because God has shown us his abundant mercy and begotten us to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's where our hope is. But you can be certain of tomorrow because he lives. I confess tomorrow. I confess tomorrow. My friends, let me bring this to a conclusion. If we are going to be a part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken, then we must endeavor to put these kingdom principles into practice in our lives. They will ensure us of a life of certainty in the midst of a world that is drowning in uncertainty. Let me finish with John 17, verse 15 to 18. And we read the following. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. To do what? To bring hope to the world that has no hope. To bring certainty to the world that is full of uncertainty. My friends, God sent his son the Lord Jesus Christ to come into the world. And Jesus here says, just as his father sent him, he has also sent us. He has also sent us. Yes, you can be an overcomer in this world that is full of confusion, 
where so many things are being discussed. People are trying to redefine the truth. And they are claiming that there is a new understanding. And they expect you to just say, oh yes, welcome them on these uh, uh, on what they they are doing without you raising your voice and say what does the word of God say I want to close now and I want to pray for you if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and you're wondering how you can become an overcomer in today's world that has no certainty first of all you need to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior you need to invite Jesus Christ to come into your life accept him as Lord and Savior of your life you can do that anytime you can do that in the privacy of your time all by yourself, you kneel down and call on God and God will come into your heart. If you are a Christian, once you have become a Christian, and for those who are already Christians, let me go through the five principles that I shared with you. Hold fast to your confession of faith. Hold fast to the confession of faith. Don't let possessions become center of your focus. Live for God's will and purpose. Remain loyal and faithful to God no matter what. Keep your focus on eternity, not on things uh, that are temporal. Remember, God loves you. We'll see you next Sunday if Jesus tarries. We want to encourage you to listen to these messages even in your spare time you can uh, uh, download this message on YouTube it's being uh, recorded live but you can watch it at a later time but also you can uh, um, access the same sermons and messages and teachings that we do here at the Kerygma on our YouTube channel, which is Ben Casey Mwanza YouTube channel. Please follow us on that. Write to us if you've got any questions that you have you want to ask concerning what we have preached on or what you would like to know um, concerning um, with regards to the scriptures and uh, perhaps the issues that have been troubling you please write to us at the following email address, the karigima 146 at gmail.com. I'll, I'll repeat that. The karigima in lowercase, the karigima 146 at gmail.com. God bless you. May the Lord cause his face to shine on you. I pray that if you're not well, that the Lord will touch you. If you are trusting God for a breakthrough in your life, I say amen to that, and I stand with you, but it must be based on the will of God. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday.